B-I-G, I get it. Great place to visit. I got a girl, she is at home. I feel like I'm married to California. One fast women and marijuana. A lawless land, man, we do what we wanna. And get so high, high. And get so high, high. DWI certifies this song, Heat. On the daily planes, laying here, hopeful, searching for fanfare. Delisters are walking slowly past standing. The star used to be brighter, now the glow is much lighter. In line at a hot spot, pulling an all nighter. Thirst is real, somehow I'm staying hydrated. Don't need no star just to feel like that I've made it. Back to the nightclub, I'm faded, dancing on beat. Her tight dress pressed upon my body, making more heat. For songs seem like all night, DJ screwing the blend up. We getting closer, I wonder where this could end up. Let's hit the car, stumble past the valet. This is kicking in, can we make it to the valley? Look at me, and my eyes are we still here? If we both don't wanna die, we should chill here. We zoned out, laughing and giggling, hoping that this wear off so we can go and get it in. I got a girl, she's at home, but I feel like I'm married to California. Love fast women and marijuana. I love this land, man, we do what we wanna. We get so high, high. We get so high, high. We should pick the phone up, have somebody scoop us. For climbed in a Honda, we staring where the roof is. I pull my phone out, the screen is like a window to another dimension. So you call me a weirdo. I think I love her. She high, we high. I'm out my square, cause normally I don't be high. But this my Cali wave with my Cali babe. Who you find the women that's making me Cali brave? Hey, I'll do you right here if you let me. I know the streets busy. But these windows will protect we are not We in America, but I call it American Can't party on New Year's Eve Oscar Grant give hell to a Sean Bell Killer Emmett Till Carolyn Bryant is a liar Hoping she fry in hell Can't play outside Tim and Rice, they murder teams Like the KKK, we playing the murder team Can't breathe, Aragona Coroners on the corner Mike Brown got gunned down Family still mourn him Can't have no car problems like Corey Jones Trayvon Martin can't cop no skittles What's going on? Can't have legal steel like Philando Castile Can't read a book like Keith Scott, you'll get killed Dylan Roof found a church, made it a murder scene the Cops didn't clap him, they took him to Burger King Can't run from no one, ask Walter Scott I'll probably make it to the end of this verse and get Yeah, what it is, y'all, it's your boy, neighborhood Nipsey Hussle Fucking with DWR, holding y'all down. The Matrix Radio Live, Swanson Ave, Hustle Music, nigga. So high, so high, so high. Yeah, man, yeah. Shout out to my dude, Head Crack, in the building. First of all, he. He don't need no introduction. You've seen him on TV before. You know what it is. But if you didn't see him on TV, he was on that Dish Nation with my man Ricky Smiley. You know, and what was the brat? The brat was on there and, and a few other people. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Eight years in. That's what I'm talking about. Round of applause for that. Love to see love to see my peoples, you know, taking over and, 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 and doing what we need to do for this media and speaking up for the cause, what we got going on. Um, that is definitely, that's one of the shows that I catch and I, I make sure I check out you know, just to make sure that I, I'm in tune with some good, you know, I don't watch TMZ. I don't watch TMZ at all. Like, unless it's- Well, I appreciate passing. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, it's y'all, y'all, y'all before TMZ because they- Well, thank that. They thank doing. you, Ram. All right. But anyway, so we got head crack in the building. Um, he's from the Bronx, but I think he's down south now with it, right? Yeah, living in HCL, man. Like, you know, people visit down south and they realize they're getting ripped off. And they're like, what? I can get a basement? What? A backyard? What? I can shoot a deer? Like, behind my house? I can do that? Not exactly. saying that I would shoot a deer, because that's just foul. They, they ain't here to bother nobody. But, you know, I'm like, I miss the Bronx, but it just becomes a time of your life where you realize that living in New York City is a ripoff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, 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 what? A whole bunch of people from the Bronx are out here in Atlanta hiding out. 
You know what I'm saying? Playing the low. People that are so New York that you would never think they would leave the tri-state area. They are out here nestled up, living their best life. And uh, you know, the only thing we're so, missing is White Castle. So yeah, White uh, exactly. Yo, check it out. We had <laughs> Joe. We had Joe Jackson in the studio the year after Michael Jackson passed, and he mm. came to the Bronx and went to White Castle up there on Allerton Avenue. The studio was on Boston Road. And he went to um mm. the studio. He and I, I just heard the story the other day. I wasn't there. I was in the studio with him, but I wasn't. I didn't realize that him and him and John S Jack Slade that he was with his old school bo bodyguards took a, took a trip up the up the block to White Castle. Nobody, you know, no other entourage or nothing. So it's funny you mentioned that. It's like, the simple things that remind you of home that just make you feel so good. Like there's a lot of times I might go pull up and go to you know. Go to Costco and get like the big bundle of White Castles just so I can have How that little slice though? of home. Does it, does it taste similar? They be all right. You know, yo, like what I do sometimes is I steam them like in a wok <laughs> just to get that cheese melting just a little bit right. The same way they steam them back at the castle. But, Word. you know, you kind of limited. You can't get none of the extra stuff, none of the fries, none of the onion rings. But, you know, any little slice of home, I'll take it. All right. So, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about how long have you has it been since you've been home? Like how long you've been down south? Uh, I've been living in Atlanta, man. Like, I'm creeping on 10 years right now. 10 years. Oh. Creep. 10 years. But, you know, I try to sneak back out to New York City anytime I can. And the cool Summertime. thing about... I said I try to sneak back out to New York anytime I can. And the cool thing about the city is the fact that, like, a lot of your friends don't move because, like, the rent control <laughs> is so crazy that, like, you know, kids you grew up with... Uh, like they either took over their parents' house or right. God forbid, sometimes they still live with their parents they, because inherit, like, no we, one can afford to move nowhere. We inherit things that we rent, which is crazy how we do that in New York City, right? You're, you're li somebody live in the same, the family live in that same area or that same apartment for, you know, 20, 40 years. Mm -hmm. A lot of my Tracy Tower friends still live in Tracy Towers. No doubt. From when I went to elementary school. Wow. Okay, so you went to Clinton? Was you living I was supposed to I was supposed to go to Clinton, but then I got in a little bit of trouble and then I dipped. And then I ended up in Texas. I was in Texas for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, radio kind of found me. The next thing you know, I ended up in Atlanta. Let's talk about that. So radio found you. So that happened because you took that trip to, to Texas? Did it happen in Texas? I, well, I mean, real talk, I actually lived back and forth in Texas a, a majority of my life. I would be in New York one year with one parent, then I'd be back in Texas with another parent. Then I'd go back to New York, then I'd go back to Texas. So eventually, I graduated from high school in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I took a class uh, at college, and then that internship opened up a bunch of doors that introduced me to a bunch of radio people. Plus, on top of the fact, I used to call into the radio stations and, like, you know, battle on air all the time. So it got to the point where they was having me just come up there just to As just, artist. You know, just so kick you was, it. So you was an artist at the same time that you was uh, pursuing to be on radio to be a host? At the time, I wouldn't even say I was an artist. I was just a person who was passionate about hip hop, wow. rap, and the culture as a whole. But like, you know, rapping was something that I did and I enjoyed doing it. So eventually I realized that, hey, I could actually make some records and then I started taking the artistry a little bit more seriously. But at the same time, the radio part started taking off, too. And it made it. It wasn't like the ludicrous story where, like, you kind of have an advantage because you're on the radio right. rapping. Nah, it was a disadvantage to me because I was on the radio. And then, like, you know, competing, competing stations wouldn't want to support you because you were at the competing station. And then also, too, I'm in Dallas being from New York, rapping about New York stuff that people from Dallas didn't quite get 100%. Got so it, it made it. it a little difficult, you know, but eventually I found my niche, tweaked, tweaked a couple things here and there, and I made it work for me. All right. No, that, that, all right. So that's how far back you go with the music. So you, out of high school, you was into hip hop and, and rapping. You had bars already back then. Yeah. I was always in training. Always, always in training. In training. All right. So, um. Who'd you grow up around? Like anybody from your hood that made it that, that you can that you can name drop that you can say? You know, the crazy thing is like, so my cousin was Sonny is Sonny Caesar from Onyx. Okay. You know what I mean? And like we have a like an Instagram and Facebook relationship. I've never met him in person. Like <laughs> he's crazy. on my mom's side. Okay. Cause every time there's a family reunion, I always miss the family reunion. So I never got a chance to meet him. But you know, on the boxing side, Joe Frazier was my cousin. You know, okay. I used to like, you know, go go up to Philly and go hang out with him, go check out the gym. And, uh, you know, hang out with the family in North Philly. Um, but other than that, that's the only people that I know, like, you know, far as bloodline that is involved in entertainment. So now it's just me, you know, just trying to create this legacy and bring as many people as I can along with me. I see. Now, I see that energy. I seen yesterday you was online doing uh, uh, an online show at that time, right? Whether it was like 9 o'clock, 
at night last night? Like yeah. Last night? So tell me a little so bit about that my, show. Yeah, so it's called Headcracks Got Game. It's a social distancing game show that uh, you know me and my team came up with. And basically what we try to do with that is we understand people bored, don't got nothing to do on Monday night, and might be a little bit low on cash. So what we do is we give you the opportunity to play a game online on IG so you can win some money. You know well, what I mean? I didn't know last... there was money. See, I didn't know there was money. I would have stayed, I would have paid attention more if I knew there was some money involved last night. Absolutely. There's up. there's no way I could keep them people on there that long if there wasn't like a, sil a pot right. of gold at the end of the tunnel. So, all right. So, but, so, so set it up for people. Tell me how, how does it work? So every week I switch, I switch the games up. It's never the same game from week to week. Sometimes I'll go somewhere and meditate and think of like, all right, cool. What can I do creatively in a social media space that no one's doing? And I, I think a different game. So last night we did Psychic Jeopardy. And the way the game worked was, it's kind of not just like Jeopardy, Psychic Bingo. And the way the game worked is, it's like bingo, but like uh, if you pick the category with like famous actors, you got to give me an actor whose name begins with a B, one that begins with an I, uh, one that ends with an N, a that's, G, that's and an O, I, right? I've seen that. I've seen what people were saying. Like, but um, here's where the psychic part. And all that. I was watching that part. Right. So here's where the psychic part comes in, right? Um, the, uh, oh, Damien, the, um, you have to like guess the specific names. So it took people a long time to figure out some of the specific names. We only supposed to be on there for an hour. We was on there for almost two hours. So give me no one instance. got the last one. Give me a for instance. Just play the game with me right now so I can understand visibly what, what you, how you... How you okay, cool. Like. What, all right, here we go. So uh, let's see. Give me an actor whose name starts with a D. Uh, Denzel Washington. All right, give me, give me one whose uh, name starts with an I. Got me right people now. get people get stumped on some thing is like it's one thing to know them but you would have had to say the specific ones that i had written down already on the grid so as it relates to uh okay to you know if i said like b the opposite of categories then basically it's like you you gotta say what you have written down on on your side instead of not saying that's it. where this that's where the psychic aspect comes in like you literally almost have to be psychic to know every single one i made but as people guess certain ones like for b it was ben affleck then everybody had to figure out okay. ingo then if somebody figured out that g was gabri sidibe okay cool we got two of them who can figure out the other two so whoever puts them all together at the end that's who would have got the money got but it. after two hours everybody got all of them except the o which was oscar isaac and who's that He's an actor. He was in Star. He was in the last three Star Wars movies that came out. That's he was also, guy? nah. He's the he's the dude Poe. He was the uh, the, the smuggler. Like he's kind of like the the uh, Han Solo character in the okay. new series. Okay, got you. Yeah, but that's if everybody saw the new Star Wars movies. But he's also been in some other stuff. He's kind of popping. Right. So your, your your palette for movies probably is very vast. So you you probably was throwing everybody off like how you would have got me just now because I, I I couldn't think of an eye. I'm like. <laughs> well, I the answer for I was Ice T. Yeah, Ice and he's on TV every week. Yeah, he's an actor. Law and Order, he's a damn good super actor. 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 Yeah, right. you know, Trespass, New Jack yeah. City, all that. Yeah, you got me. All right, so that that was dope. <laughs> so I mean, obviously you have a you have a dope personality for what's going on with this this social distancing being online, and because you have you know you have a brand and you on your artist and you're online. I mean, you're on TV. Um, I'm sure you get you have a lot of fun with your fans. So what, my my question is, and this was really a question for like a lot of the entertainers that 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 got caught up in this. Or oh, what do I do now with myself? Like why 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 can't this happen more often? You know, with with the following that you have, you know, without being locked in your house. Like, is there really not enough time to come up with this type of things when you're super busy? Well, I think, you know, when your schedule is a little bit more erratic and you got to move around a lot more, it does eliminate some of your free time to do things. Now, with this, you know, like, you know, stillness that's been imposed upon us, it does give us an opportunity to be able to create things that not only can allow you to have fun, but also you can create opportunities for other people. Because in addition to the game show, a couple weeks in a row, I was doing something where I was having, like, artists come online and just spit mm -hmm. and put their cash app out there just so in case if people was watching them rhyme and they liked them enough, Boom, you can get, you know, a couple dollars put in your tip jar, you know, from the people watching oh, you spit. Oh. Because, like, you know, the opportunity to do shows has kind of been null and void during this whole quarantine situation. So, you know, just trying to create things that just put some level of normalcy in there, you know, because I love the culture. And, you know, I know if I needed an opportunity or needed some dough, I would like for something like that to be, you know, be around.
Nah, salute to you for doing that too, because that that I think that's important to, you know, to, to definitely pave the way for others and come up with these creative ways to engage people, and then let people win something because everybody want to win something. Um, Absolutely. I found it. I found it really hard, you know, being an entrepreneur and charging for a service, you know, for people to do broadcasting and all that. I find it, I found it hard for the first two months to even charge for what I do, and I I've been getting paid for it for my whole life, but I feel like. Everybody don't have it, and I'm home, and my engineer's here, so I'll, you know, I'll take care of him, and you know, just let everybody live a little bit while this is like this, while everybody figures it out. So that's my way of giving back, you know, to whoever took advantage of it, and then you know, pretty soon when they open back up, the cash register right. gotta open back up because <laughs> I got, I gotta get back to work. But um, yes, yeah, and sometimes it's hard having a heart doing what you do because like sometimes you just want to do things because you understand because like you know if like the money ain't there for people you don't want to overcharge them but at the end of the end of the day you're still trying to run a business so yeah. it's that weird fork in the road that sometimes we come to. I agree. I agree. So I right, let's let's move let's move up from the entertainment side of it. Well, we we didn't get into the we didn't get into how you got onto the the um because I know I I. I I got the information that you was doing radio before you got on Ricky Smiley. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, so me and my buddies was at a party one night and a new station came to town. They was playing De La Soul. They was playing Ghostface Killer. And like being a hip hop head, I, we wanted to be a part of that. So we went to a studio like the day after we was at this party. We made a tape like this is what our show is about. This is what it sounds like. We turned in about two weeks later, we get a phone call. It's like, hey, uh, we listened to your tape. We want to give you guys a show. Now, we thinking we like was going to do like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., something like that, because mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do. Because at this point in time, I'm running like a street team. You know, I'm working for a record company. I just wanted some extra dough and the ability to put some artists on the radio. Right. So we, uh, we, we take a meeting with them. They're like, yo, whatever it is you're doing for a living, just quit it and come work for us full time. And, wow. you know, they, they dropped the bag on us. It made sense. And then after that, radio was my career from then on out. Because I saw what the record industry was doing, and I knew the money that was there at the time wasn't going to always be there because things was evolving. That was dope. That was dope. I was trying to, I was trying to find the, the major sound of applause for you right there because that was... <laughs> that, was that was dope. How you, how you spun that just from, from running with a street team, put together, you was proactive, put together the tape, and then you took the tape and, and get, put it in somebody's hand, and you got results. That's it's the art of manifestation, man. Like, when you know what it is you truly want, the answer is never no. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always walk in the fact that, like, yo, whatever it is I'm trying to do is happening. It's going to happen, and I already know how it's going to end. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we put doubt on ourselves that we can achieve anything that we're trying to achieve. And the second you do that, you've already defeated yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, I never defeat myself into anything, man. I've, I've conquered most of the things that I've set out to do, and... I'm still climbing because there's other things that I want to do. I just haven't set my intentions on yet. That's that's dope. So, all right, so I wanna I wanna take a break uh, so we could play the video right. on, on um online and then uh, we had logged out of the the the, the Facebook I mean uh, Instagram real fast because something something happened with that phone but we, we're gonna play the joint online so they can see what's the name of the song that you the, the video you sent Bryce. All right, cool. Yo, this joint right here is pretty much like, you know, we do this this thing called the flow and go on the morning show that I have called the morning hustle. It's uh, streaming everywhere. Uh, we syndicate it, man. 37 oh. plus cities across the country. So, uh, you know, if you go to the morning hustle uh, dot com, you can listen to the show live Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Or you can download the morning hustle app which is available in the App Store and on Google Play, you know, for your commute in the morning. And uh, so we do this thing on Friday called The Flow and Go, and this week we wanted to tackle everything that was going on with police brutality and all the things that's been going on in the country because, like, you know, we've been kind of sleeping on it because we've been dealing with this whole quarantine situation, but the same problems we were dealing with before this quarantine kicked off are still in effect right now. So we tackled it in a little bit of a, uh, I ain't going to say a freestyle because we totally wrote this, but, you know, in our freestyle segment called The Flow and Go. Check it out. We in America, but I call it American Can't party on New Year's Eve Oscar Grant give hell to a Sean Bell Killer Emmett Till Carolyn Bryant is a liar Hoping she frying hell Can't play outside Tim and Rice They murder teams Like the KKK We playing the murder team Can't breathe Eric Garner Coroner's on the corner Mike Brown got gunned down Family still mourn Can't have no car problems Like Corey Jones Trayvon Martin can't cop No Skittles What's going on? Can't have legal steel Like Philando Castile Can't read a book Like Keith Scott You'll get killed Dylan Roof found 
out of church, made it a murder scene. Cops didn't clap him, they took him to Burger King. Can't run from no one. Ask Walter Scott, I'll probably make it to the end of this verse and get. Hey yo, what's good? It's your girl Cardi B, and you rocking with the Matrix Studio Network, baby. Keep it poppin'. Yo, big shout out to DWI, Matrix Studios, you know who it is, your boy SP the Ghost, LOX, D Block. It's like chalk on the chalk, I mean, you know, nails on the chalkboard to watch that shit. Like, come on, like, these people are getting frustrated. Like, come on. It's almost like they, the, for the culture means just do it however and whatever. Like, because Swiss and them wouldn't mm. do that regular. Like, they wouldn't allow somebody to put out no product like that. If they was getting paid for it, nope, that wouldn't happen, right? So, let, but we should still have that same energy. Is my that's my thought on it. Like. It shouldn't be that hard, and I'm sure at some point, what they're about t almost 10 battles in now, they still not using any other technology outside of Instagram. And I don't know if it's some backdoor checks being cut or whatever's going on, but I think they, they need to figure that out because that's a good thing, regardless quarantine or not. That's an easy way when people are busy, they can at least get a little time in whatever their dressing room or whatever to still be a part of something that features how many, how many did sisters had the other day, like seven, 700,000? Oh. Yeah, they cre they cracked 700,000, and that was smooth, too. And, you know, they're getting ready to do Nelly and Ludacris this weekend, which ought to be interesting, yeah. you know, because, like, people don't ever want to give Nelly his credit, but at one point, I mean, like, he's one of the highest-selling rap artists in the world ever. And he did a bunch of, right, and he did a bunch of other shit after that, like, with the, with the um, fat, what is it, fat, baby fat, baby fat? Oh, uh, no, nah, uh, was oh, it, no, uh, no, no. Apple Bottoms. Apple Bottoms, yeah, baby fat is, uh, Russell, um... Ready? Video, so we ready to go back? Oh. All right, we coming back. The Matrix Radio Vision Live with DWI live from the BXNY. It just keeps me entertained all day. It makes the day go by fast. The most influential urban radio talk show live from the BXNY. The producer's point of view. That was a proper introduction. We back. I'm on the line with Head Crack. The artist Head Crack, you might know him, you know, his his facial features if you're watching on the camera from being on that show, um, This Nation on online. Um, he's streamed over, what you said, 37 stations. So you heard his voice. You probably hear his voice and now you see the face. So get familiar with new music. The music is dope. Yeah, I mean, Thank the personality you, is, is amazing. Um, I was telling Anna, right? Manager? Yeah. I was telling her, I was like, this interview ain't going to be like an interview. You're just going to talk. And you from the Bronx? We're just going to kick it. I don't need a script for this one. Like, we can just we can just talk about what we talk about because it's going to make sense because we both know what we want to talk about and we know how to do this game. So um, any 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 struggles you care to tell to people that that's trying? Because the, the, the point of this show is the producer's point of view for anyone that's producing the product and it's to show how, where, where it began for you and, and how you got to that point. So you told a lot of how you got to Texas and and to the, get on the radio and all those things, but what, the struggle, like we need to know what the struggle was so that people understand that it wasn't a smooth, a smooth sailing. I mean, I think the biggest struggle is having patience and knowing when to do things and knowing when to wait till the time is right. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, you know, we're so reactive ah. as human beings that, you know, as soon as you get what I idea, you just want to go and make it happen. And I think there's a lot to that and some ideas you should make happen right away. But sometimes you got to let creative people be creative mm -hmm. and you got to surround yourself with a dope team who can help you out with the admin. Like, I'm one of the people, I could walk into a room and I could rattle off like 10 really dope ideas. But 
those ideas are nothing without somebody to help you execute and you can only do so much by yourself i mean granted you might have a strong run maybe you can do it by yourself for a few weeks but there comes a time where yeah, nah. you gotta afford us you gotta fortify yourself with people who believe in what it is you're doing and when and you get that you're gonna see things start to work instagram live is the only thing that i can really do by myself and not really fuck that up Excuse my language, anybody that don't want to hear curses. Um, any side, of, anything outside, outside of that, I got my, I got my guy, I'm a one, we are two man army over here. I got my, my guy Bryce, and he does everything. I was young, young, inspiring producer, artist, um, coming up in the game. I taught him everything that he knows, and he took it and ran with it, straight from the islands, and um, Word. yeah, and he's dope. And so I don't have to come in and try to figure that out. So to your point. We need that because, again, if I had to come in and didn't set up everything, oh, this interview wouldn't be happening right now because it's too much things that have to be, get going and, and tested and all that. So we definitely salute the teams and, and people, the personnel behind the scenes. And, Dame, to add on to what you're saying, too, like, I mean, even getting the youth that are, like, hungry for opportunity and passionate about what, you know, the platforms can provide. Like getting somebody like that under your wing, it's important because at the end of the day, somebody taught you, right? I mean, right, I mean unless right, you taught, yeah. taught yourself. Not, my, you know. my uncles, my uncles, I mean, they had the ASR, uh, was it 12? They, they, had, they had everything. My uncles had everything in the house, DJ equipment and all that records. So I inherited everything I got from all of my uncles. Like, so I, but I taught myself, I was a self, taught learn you know I, I wanted to I, nobody pushed it on me they was doing what they was doing and I was just behind them trying to follow behind them and it, it was naturally you know it, it came up in me but that that is true you definitely need you need every we need more mentors out here we need people to stop you know getting in the game and going you know 20 years and then want to give back like you could give back on your fifth year like you don't have to wait until you damn near in the retirement stage to say oh I want to do it for the culture now like now nah, let's let's I, and, and I get a lot of people are busy trying to chase the bag, and, you know, and keep up to a lot that's going on. But there's still a way that you could still give back something, like just so that, you know, you can have somebody right under you, some successes. So that's dope. That's dope. There's so an, I, there's now, enough fish in the ocean to teach other people how to fish. Exactly. It's not like we're gonna and, run out of fish. And, you and know culturally, what I mean? culturally, you know, that's that's probably one of our biggest problems. One not wanting to tell the next one how to do something or one afraid to tell the next one because they think that's going to cut into their money and they don't realize mm -hmm. that there's a whole world out here. It's not even just New York, Atlanta. Like, you got Toronto. You got a European side. Like, there's so much ways to, to get money. Like, you don't have to be stuck on, especially with the internet. Like, you don't just, you know, share. You never know. Like, I, I, this is the way I think about it and I don't know if you if you agree. Like, the more people that you teach and put in position that you treat right, that's the better chance of you never being able to fall on your face because somebody's going to remember that. If, if it's 20 people, 19 of them people might turn their backs on you because they busy yep. with one of the, you know what I mean, at that right time, that one person like, oh, D, I got you. Or, or, you know, head, head, I got you. What you need? Because you, you've done so much. And I think, you know, that's, that's... That's always been my biggest thing. I try not to burn no bridges. And, like, no matter where I go, I even treat the janitor like he run the place because at the end of the day, you never know how, you know fortunes can reverse i may be in this position to help people right now and maybe a year or two from now maybe i'm not in that position but if i know i helped people mm -hmm. there's a you know there's a pretty decent chance that somebody be like oh man like what all right let me make sure he good you know what i'm saying and i don't even do it just for somebody to do it back for me i do it because it it's the because right thing to do right right exactly you know I so that's how i live with it nah that but that's that's dope so all right so i played the record i played the record earlier so before we get out of here, I definitely want to play it live for the peoples, again, on both sides to make sure that everybody Appreciate can hear that. because that was a good drum. I was riding out to it. And it was always good when somebody sent me something and I put it on in the car and it rings off the right way. Like, and, and it comes on when other songs are coming on and it fits right into... I don't be like, what the hell is that? Well, how'd that get in there? So <laughs> right. if I don't if I don't do that to it, then it's good. So from a producer's point of view, because that that is what I am. I'm 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 music first. I'm always the quality of music first. Like, things gotta sound right. Things gotta look right. Everything gotta match up. I'm not a perfectionist, but I just know that you know people buy things that look and sound good. That's Absolutely. just that's just how it is. The quality, you know, that's just what it is. That's what I, that's how I was brought up from the Bronx. That's how Swiss beats and everybody taught me. And um, I shout out Swiss because I, I know him personally. Like, I seen him. We know each other. We grew up together. And so, you know, I was taking jabs at him. And even online, I'm, I'm, I'm inboxing. I'm doing everything. I'm like, at some point, at some point, you got you to, gotta, like you said, you got to sit down and, and think, all right, maybe, I, maybe somebody else can help me figure this out. 
Right. How can we improve the design that's already there? Like, right. you know, there's always room for improvement. Right, because they got credit for the, the Versus joint is dope, so they got that credit already. So what's next for you, though? What what else do you, because you, you sound like well, you have a whole situation already planned out from this pandemic. Well, the, ne the next movement is I'm um, dropping my new single, Bad News, on Friday. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely a sharp left turn from the vibes of Cali. It's definitely more so in a um in a, in a boom bap kind of pocket. I'm mm -hmm. telling my stories. Actually, I tell the story about how I ended up from the Bronx, ended up in Dallas in Bad News. You know what I'm saying? And there's a video to go along with that. You know what I'm saying? I try to create visuals to everything I do. So if you love Cali, go check the video out for that on YouTube right now. If you ain't got a chance to check out my video that preceded that, Africa Dabra, that's also available on YouTube right now. I'm easy to find, H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K, -A -A on all social media, all platforms. The music and the videos are there. All right. Um, yeah, this computer just did something totally different than what it was supposed to do, so give us a second for that. I and, um, So you're, you're on YouTube. You on YouTube? We're gonna we're gonna um follow you on YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. I'm big on the subscribing thing now because I I just made a thousand subscribers, and I never was one Rats. telling people to yo follow me, subscribe, subscribe. If you wanted to, you know how to do it. But now I'm like I'm I'm doing campaigns about it now because now I know there's a bag attached to that, and I they already re they erased a whole my whole legacy of videos that I had. I don't had porn stars in there. We don't had mad stuff. Karis one freestyle, and we had mad stuff there. And you know when they started ch uh, changing the the way that they do things with, about the music being played, think about it. I had I had like at least ten years worth of content and mad DJs playing stuff all, throughout all of the shows. So when they switched wow. over, they just they just deleted the whole page. They didn't even just give me like gutted a, everything. Yeah, they no, they no warning, no time to clean up anything yeah. <laughs> or like correct any. Damn, I, they probably not, sent an email. Impressive. They probably sent a bunch of emails, but even still, like. <laughs> the way the shows were made back then, the way we were doing them was based on a DJ and music and playing sign music and independent music. So it was no way that I was going to clean it up. I wasn't going to edit all that stuff. So it, I, I saved the videos, though. I got videos, though. I, okay, so I you're got, good to go. Yeah, you just yeah. do a little edit, edit, trim, trim, yeah, take yeah, just trim. the parts you need, keep the yeah. freestyles. You might be all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I got some, something was able to be savage. Hold on, so... All right, so yeah, just give out your, your contact information. We're gonna play that play that record. Go, I don't know what the hell this computer just did. Some crazy <laughs> master reset. Uh, let me see. It's, it's not even. As soon as you account. become reliant on the technology, it kind of revolts yeah, against you, man. man. But, That's crazy. but major shout out to the Matrix Studios. Shout out to you, Damien. Right. And listen, man, the single's called Cali. It's out right now. New single, bad news drops this coming Friday. Um, there's visuals to everything. So if you like what you hear, please go to my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash headcrack. Check out the music, man. And uh, I'm here for a while, man. I ain't going nowhere, baby. Headcrack, H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K. -E -A -A All right. Thank you for your time, man. And we're going to catch up. We'll, Thanks for I, having I, I'll hit you on the DM. All right, man. I looking forward to it, my brother. Thank you for the opportunity, Dan. Peace. The producer's point of view.